Hello my viewers and you welcome to this exciting lesson in Revit. In this lesson, I just want to teach you on how you can create a connection. And this is the model that we are going to use. We are just going to pick two members and create that connection. And the connection we are going to create is called a single-sided end plate connection in Revit. So I'm just going to do whatever I'm going to do in this lesson to teach you on how to create that connection on this beam and that beam. Now, before I proceed, I just want to ask all of you, please, don't just watch my video, subscribe to this channel and also turn on the bell notification. That way you'll be notified once I upload some new videos. And I just want to mention that if there's anyone who would like to learn, you know, the modeling and detailing, including production of construction documents in Revit, that is for steel structures. Make sure that you check the links in the description. I have a detailed course where I've, you know, taught Revit or for, for steel structures on a real project. And in addition to that, there are also courses like in Revit architecture and also robot structure analysis and some more courses are coming. So check the links in the description. Now, let me not waste much of your time. Let's go ahead and get started and see how we can create a single-sided end plate connection right here. So to create a connection, you just need to go to the steel there. You can see that under the steel there, we have two options for you to create the connection. We have the connection and the connection automation, but we are going to use the first option, all right? So I'll just also go to structure and you see that the same options are appearing right here. As you can see, we have connection and connection automation. Okay. Now at below the connection automation, we have that short arrow there. That is where you need to load your connection that you want to create. So see that if I just later on, as we are going to see the connection is not loaded once you just opened. So you need to load the connection. So I'll just click on the connection settings as the first step for you to create any connection. Just click on it. Then from here, you see that you have the connections and this is where you can pick any connection that you want to, to create. Now, from here, if you don't want to start searching there, you can even filter. I know that the single-sided end plate connection is under the platform beams. I can just select that and just drag down. You see that I have the connection right there. Now, you will notice that from here, you need to load the connection up to the second box, meaning that from here, this connection is supposed to, to be taken there. So to do that, you just need to select that connection, then click on add and just click on okay. So that connection is loaded within here. Now I'll just zoom in here where I want to create my connection. And all you need to do is select that beam and select the second beam. And you need to go to either structure or still just click on still and just click on connection now you see that the connection is going to is actually loaded but it has loaded the generic connection so just click there and make sure that you pick the connection that you want to create so it's the one i loaded just click on it and it to show that it's loading there and once it loads it will appear right there i'll just click outside and we have that connection with the default settings you can see that if i orbit even this side the connection is there now it has just loaded the default settings if you have already designed the connection now it's just a matter of you now changing the properties the parameters for this connection so that it matches your design so that it's able to you know you know to be to, to carry the loads and transmit it you know to all these beams if you're an engineer, make sure that those settings now you need to start, you know, adjusting the connection according to the design. So what I'll do for you to start making those adjustments, just select on the connection. So I'll just pick on the connection. And from here, you just need to go to edit type. And it will take you to where you can start adjusting, you know, the plates, you know, the bolts and anything so that it matches the design for this particular node as we are going to see later on now once it opens like this you can also zoom in in and out i'm just using a wheel on my mouse you are able to orbit but if you want you can even click there just zoom in there and click on the center so that if i hold my left mouse on orbit i'm able to orbit like that i want to see what is happening here and zoom in then simply close now from here make sure that you go to modify parameters and click on edit 
So from here now you can start configuring. Now the first option that you are going to see is the top cop and the bottom cop. You can see from here that by default the copying has been applied and the radius is 13. It's using a K distance as you can see. I'm just going to use this one and the cop length you can see that we have it right here. Now if you want to start changing these things for example I'll just orbit like this so that you can see what is happening here. Let me go to top. If I change the cop length, for example, let me say 20 and click in a different box, you can see that it expands. Okay. So I'll leave it there. The cop radius again, we are on top cop. If maybe I want to change to 20, but this is 13, I can click there. Click, you can see that it changes. But I'll just maintain the default, which was there 13. Click there and leave it the way it is. Now you can do the same also for the bottom, but I'm not interested in there. Go ahead and change those according to your detailing rules that you are using in your office according to the design. Change the, you know, the copying both on top and at the bottom. I'll simply go to plates and bolts, then click on plate alignment. You see that the plate thickness, this one right here, the plate thickness, let me just change this one to maybe 16. Right click in a different box, you can see it changes from here. Then go to bolts and holes. Then the first step for you, if you're using imperial units, it's fine. You can go ahead and pick the, the diameter there. But I'm using metrics, so I have to click there first of all. Click on all and find the standard X or X. Select on it. Then I can go back there and pick 16. Watch out what happens here. So I want to use 16 millimeters. You can see that it, it's bigger like that. Then the grade, the bolt grade, I want to use 8.8. .8. I'm happy with what I have. Go to horizontal bolts now. Okay, for horizontal bolts, it means that what we are adjusting is in that direction. Okay, so I'll go to the plate layout right there. I'll maintain the bolt edge. Okay, I'll go to the third one, center distance. It means that from this bolt up to the bolt on the other side, if I just orbit like that, we have two bolts this side and this side. So it's the spacing between those two bolts, as you can see from the number there. So I'll go here and let me just have 100. Just click in a different box. Now here, the edge distance is from this bolt up to the end. So I'll just change this one to 40. Click there, change this one to 40 also. Click there, you can see it changes. Then I'll go to the vertical. Vertical, it means that it's that direction. Now, under the layout, I just want to use the second die. You can use any of these other options, but I want to use the second die. Then, then the plate height by, I want to pick a uh, boat distance from top. So it means that from the center of, you know, this boat to the top there, we have 76. That's what it means. You see that if I increase this one, let me say to 90 from 76, click there, it will move down, including the plate. Okay, it moves everything the board, including the plate. So now I want to have them from the top to the center of that board. Okay, what I want to have is maybe 80. Then click in a different box. You see it goes back, moving everything, including the plate. Now here we go to the groups. We have group one, group two up to group three, but group two and three are not active because there's zero. You see that if I put maybe two more bolts and click in a different box, we are going to have two more bolts. Groups will help you to, you know, to edit or to configure the bolts separately so that I have an option to control the bolt distance for the last group separately here and also configure the other one separately. But if I just put a zero there, and just click there, you see that I have those three. So I just want to have one group and I just want to change this one maybe to four bolts, click in a different box. I'm happy with what I have. Now start distance is from the top there up to the center of that board. Let me change this one, let me say 50, then click in a different box. What is going to change is the plate. It's like the edge, okay from the that board to the end of that one so i think i'm also going to maintain the 40 the one i use click there so you see that we have it there so orbit like that as you can see i'm happy if you want you can increase it but i'm happy with what i have now intermediate distance the spacing between those ports let me say i want to use 80 click there right so as you can see we have it there now maybe for some reason i also since i have 40 here let me also maybe if I go to, we have the vertical, there's something I want to check. 
let me increase the spacing here because I want my plate maybe to go almost at the end here. So let me say 100 the intermediate distance. But again, the configuration is up to you depending on how you are designing the connection. But for me, I think I'm okay with what I have. The spacing 100, then the start distance there is 40. Then the end distance also at the end here. Okay, from there up to the edge of that plate. Let me also maintain the 40 so that it's uniform and click there. You can see I'm happy with my 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 end plate. So everything is okay. So you can configure your connection. They want to be if you want stiffeners. I'm not going to add the stiffeners. You can do that. The beams, the welds. I'm just going to use six millimeter. You know, for all the for everything here. Okay, you can even see two, one, three, all these. So if I want, I can just put six. Again, put the kind of connection thickness that you want. But I think I'm okay with the configuration of my connection. This is a single-sided end plate connection. You can even see from there. Then just click on OK. But I think we are there. It has loaded. Usually it's a click of a button. So you can see that we have the connection right there. Everything is configured. I should have duplicated. So all the changes that I made have applied to that one. But if you want to duplicate, just click on edit type there. And it will take you to where you can, you know, duplicate your connection and now change all the settings. But it's okay. I've just done everything within that, you know, connection. So as I said, if I want to duplicate, I can just click on there. Give it a different name, click on OK, and it will appear right there. But I'm not doing that. I'll simply cancel it. I don't want to waste a lot of time. This is how you create your connection. Later on in the next video, maybe we are going to look at how you can copy the connection. So thanks for watching. See you in some upcoming tutorials.